Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 5 list. Today I'm joined by Andy. Hello. Hello. We are here to talk about something we've maybe not been able to do for a while and that's travel related games. So these are ones that we either want to travel with or we have travelled with in the past. So hopefully this year is the right time to make this list rather than last year. So yeah, it's the perfect time to start getting that list together, folks. Exactly, exactly. So let's start it off. Andy, what is your number five? So my number five travel game is one that I have taken travelling and I will intend to take travelling soon again, hopefully. Uh, and that is Not Alone by Stronghold Games. For those of you who haven't played, is a one versus many asymmetric hidden movement for, uh, player game. Yeah. I always add far too many qualifiers for that because it's got so many things you can describe. I'm sure I once added an extra one just for, just for the sake of it before. <laughs> uh, in which the single player is the alien on a hostile planet trying to assimilate the remaining one to six players. And it's really cool. It's really clever. It's all based on cards. So there are ten cards laid out on the table, which are the different locations. Each location has powers. The human players have to play a card where they're going to be. The alien tries to capture them by playing the card where they think they're going to be. In fact, not playing a card, they're playing a token. And there are variable powers by the alien with special cards they can play as one-off. There are cards the humans can play as one-off. And it is brilliant. It works really well at two players. I've mostly played it at two players. My partner and I have taken it quite a few times on holiday. I've played it in the house a few times, but you can bring it in with other friends. It's great as well because of that. Because if you take, even if you are just you and the other person, taking that game across there, if you go somewhere and meet new friends, it's easy one that an experienced player can teach new players and one of the other players can be the alien and it's really good and gets really tense, really ridiculous. Uh, like A good level of comedy anger can be brought forward by that game and yeah, it's all card based so I was like one board and a few tokens so not too many pieces which is a key thing for travelling and uh, we've sleeved our entire copy as well so it's even more safe to play in various locations. So yeah, really, really good travel game. I've not played this one, but it does sound uh, like quite a, a good amount of fun, to be fair. I, is it the sort of one you say, like, if you're introducing new players, one of you plays the alien? Is that sort of, is that the harder role to play? It depends. It's very hard in two-player. It can be easier with multiple players because there's only ten locations. So if you've got a full six alternative players, there is a higher chance of just, like, getting one by random. And then... The idea is they, once they've played a card, it stays out in an open discard pile so you can see more of where they're going to be. There are ways to capture multiple locations, so it can be easy, depends on how well the players are doing, but there's it's surprisingly balanced. There's a great way of doing that. But yeah, if you're not experienced in playing that game, you're playing for the very first time, you can probably look your way through for a bit until you figure out what's going on and still do quite well. Um, and yeah, we haven't taught it to anybody randomly. Um, where we normally go on holiday, it's primarily pensioners that we see. So we haven't <laughs> taught any of them yet. But one day I will. One day Ethel will definitely be not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, <laughs> uh, so my number five is uh, my biggest game on the list. And that is mostly because it's got some really chunky tiles. And that's Quirkle. Now, you can get a travel version, which is much smaller, but the version I've got, I really like the chunky wooden tiles. But it's in like a drawstring bag, it doesn't have a box, which means, you know, you can fit it in that bag or whatever. Maybe it's more for if you're going on a, you know, a car journey, rather than, uh, <laughs> you know, flying where you've got a restricted amount of weight because of the tiles and space. Um, yep. But in Quirkle, it, it's kind of like a puzzle that everyone is playing. You've basically yeah. got six colours and six shapes. When you play your tiles down, you choose one of those. And you can play as many of those in a row, but you can't repeat. So you can't have two oranges. Um, oh, sorry, you could have all orange. Or you could have yeah. all circles, for instance. But if you've got a row of oranges, you couldn't put a green on the end and stuff like that. You gain points yeah. for just putting the tiles down but then if you get a quirkle which is you've completed the six you also get bonus points so there's the tension well not tension but there's the kind of like all right this is about to happen if i put that fifth one down someone else could just swoop in 
and put the other one down and get the bonus points. So I'm going to hold on to that and hope I draw it so I've got both shapes that I can put down at the same time. And it's it's just yep. a lot of fun. It does require a good amount of table space. Um, and that's, yep. that's why it's number five, because it's the biggest. But the fact it's in the bag and they're chunky tiles, you don't have to worry about them really being sort of damaged in a in a bag or in a boot or whatever. That's why it's there, Quirkle. See, I've not played Quirkle, but it's always been on a short list to get because one of my other things I request for is games you can play outside. Last year we got yep. we finally moved out to the garden and we bought a patio table. So I was like, right, playing games outside is the thing. And <laughs> yep. I spent more than time to Yep, anything that's got a chunky solid tile and no card, let's give that a try. So that's that's been on the I'm sure it's in like an Amazon shopping list somewhere, just in case. But oh, that does sound really good. That sounds like a nice kind of. I like a little physical tile puzzler as well. Something that's got light on rules, but big on sort of strategy and ways to sort of trip yourself up. I always quite like a game like that. Yeah, and like you say, it's one you can play outside. The, the, you know, there's so many games where it's like I would like to be able to play this outside, but then the tiles flow or what like move or the cards blow away. This certainly won't have that because of those chunkiness. I don't know about the travel version. The travel one, which is, you know, maybe better for this list, might yep. move around a bit more because I'm assuming it's a lot lighter. They're certainly smaller tiles. So, uh, but yeah. So what is your number four? So my number four is a game that I don't see people talk about much, but I see in almost every shop and almost every shop list. And that is pretty much any version you fancy. I think the one I've got with me is uh, in space. It is Gloom. So Gloom is a really cool, very weird game that people are catching up with the technology now, but not doing so, and not doing so as quickly as I thought. It's one of the first games I've played. So all of the games played with these transparent cards, which is really cool. And the idea is it's very dark theme, but I love it. It's sort of comically dark. It's Adam's family dark, I suppose I'd describe it, in that you have an a unhappy family in front of you. Your aim is to play cards on them to make them as miserable as possible. <laughs> and eventually kill them off and it's really funny because everything is a ridiculous reason why they're so miserable each one each sort of card you play has a minus point on the front and the rule is anything you can see counts so you can stack up multiple cards on top and try and get the highest amount but it does have a very small it has a, a medium sized element of take that which I normally don't like take that elements but I find that's because a lot of people misuse them they just kind of throw them in there because they expect the habit and it just makes it unfun if you can play a game without using the take that element when somebody does it's awful but this is like it's like a third of the game maybe and the take that elements themselves are hilarious because it's normally like oh what's the take that oh that person on your family just won the lottery so now they're like 50% <laughs> happier there goes your points doesn't it and it's great and the cards themselves are like plastic and transparent so they're really hard wearing if you play them in bars or not necessarily outside because they will fly about but they're not going to get too damaged but one thing we do quite like about it is it's very story driven the whole idea is if you really embrace it you're telling the story of this family that you're torturing really and the sense of humor is really there but when you're traveling if you're with friends and whatnot you might not have much to talk about at the end of the day you might be too tired to kind of go through things or you've you've all seen the same thing so there's nothing new to explore or discuss so you can get together and use this game to tell a story and suddenly there's conversation there's laughter there's fun there's excitement and the game is helping you do that without kind of feeling like oh well oh do you remember when we saw that thing today yeah we were all there <laughs> of course we saw that thing yeah um i mean you've got to pick your location because some people might be a little bit concerned about how much murder is going on at that table but it is a lot of fun I mean, I, I absolutely love the uh, the transparent cards. There's a few games that use that, and it's always it just means that game stands out. And the fact that yeah. you the take that is you win the lottery yeah. is absolutely brilliant. I love that sort of complete flip on the head there. That sounds a yeah. lot of fun. <laughs> Especially if you're all paying attention to each other and you build on that story. It's like, oh, so your dowager who lost her husband in the in the war and then lost her foot to gout or uh, <laughs> broke all of the family heirlooms. Well, you know what? Somebody saw saw how bad that was and gave her a grant to repair the house. How great <laughs> is that? And you just watch your opponent. You, I can't believe you've just done that. <laughs> it's so good. 
Uh, well, yeah. I, it sounds like one I need to play. There's tons of versions. There's like a sci-fi version, which I have. There is like a Game of, a Game of Thrones ripoff. There is the standard one, which is sort of Victorian Gothic. There is a fantasy one. There's a Cthulhu one, obviously. Yeah, that's the first yeah. one I actually played. Um, but yeah, and they're not too expensive either. Although what I would say is, it does, for travel purposes, it comes in a horrible little cardboard tuck box. So I've replaced it with the standard. The whole thing just fits in a standard Ultra Pro deck box. And that makes it much easier to transport. My number four is a game that technically some people would say you don't need to take with you because you could play it with bar mats. So okay. this is Skull. Uh, sometimes Skull and Roses, uh, it's called. Uh, effectively, each player is has uh, three uh, roses. Um, sorry, yeah, three roses and one skull. On their their sort of quite nice cardboard uh, tile or well not tiles cards, and they have basically a beer map that's two sided. On your yep. turn, you say a number, uh, which is you start so one and you put a tile one of your tiles down, but you don't let anyone else know which one it is you've put down. They the next person says two and they put one from their hand down. You keep going until you think that they are either lying, that they cannot turn that number of roses over before they hit a skull, or you kind of think, okay, they, they might be able to do that, and you kind of just let them keep going, and the number gets higher and higher until a certain point where you actually have to call it. Now, what makes this game fun is the bluffing element, because you are putting something down there. You could put your skull there straight away, and someone could call it straight away and say, okay, you said you can turn one over, go for it. Because you have to turn yours over first. And that's yeah. the part that I absolutely love because you know as soon as someone calls you, if you've bluffed, you know you're screwed. <laughs> and yeah. everyone else around the table will watch your face drop. But... If you've not lied, you turn yours over nice and smugly, but then you might have to still turn a lot of other people's over. So then you have to be like, okay, I think they were telling the truth. I'm going to turn one of theirs over. And then you're like, oh, yeah. do I turn another one? And if you manage to actually turn the, the number you've said of roses over, you flip your, your beer mat over. If you do that twice, yeah. you win. If you don't do it, though, if you find a skull, you randomly lose one of your tiles, and that could be your skull, which means for the rest of the game, you f literally have to bluff to everyone else that you have it still, because otherwise they will just turn all of yours over when they're trying to play it safe. But yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you've played Skull or Skull and Roses. So we have Skull. Uh, we've played it once. But once? We were Pretty drunk when we started, and then we <laughs> haven't really been able to play it with more than more than the two of us since. But it's funny you mentioned beer mats because obviously it is beautiful; it's a lovely thing. Yeah. And we have uh, some. My partner's plan has been to uh, mod podge, I think the term is, which is like a sort of <laughs> silicon putty thing. Yeah, yeah. Cover all of them in that to turn them in because we have a bar downstairs to ah, turn them into beer yeah, mats. Yeah. So you've got lovely beer mats, and then go. Ah, oh, do you want to play a game? Give me a beer mats. All right, let's play a game. We haven't done it yet, but it's been a plan for a while. <laughs> I mean, a genius usage of what effectively are beer mats and a game all at once. Right, it's a, it sets a very nice aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I love, I love the bluffing element of that. So we have Cockroach Poker, which we played before as well, which, yeah, that, that and Skull does the same thing, that bluffing, that kind of pushing your friends. That I'm not much of a gambler, but I do like the concept of the bluff and that sort of reading your opponents and think that is something I do enjoy so it's better that it's more less stressful than poker because nothing's really on the line <laughs> yeah yes exactly yeah that uh, it, it's it's that bit more approachable and the fact that it's like basically first to two points means that it doesn't matter if you win one game really quickly you can just be like right that was you know everyone now knows how to play let's go again yeah. And that's a good thing for a travel game to have because if you are taking away on holiday or something in space limited, you want a game you can go, yeah, I've played that. All right, let's play it again. Let's play it again. Let's play it again. Yeah. That's why Deck of Cards was always the go-to travel game for a long time. Exactly, and 
Also, because you're holding yours or you've just got the pile in front of you, it really doesn't need that much table space. Realistically, yeah. you know, you could have to put your cards on like your knee or just a small, you know, log or whatever is nearby. So you don't, you know, it's great for traveling because you don't always have access to that table or whatever. It's me on, me on number three now, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. What is your number three? So number three um, is a travel game, but also does thematically tie in. Yesterday we were discussing about if uh, we, we definitely confirmed it was travel as in games that take on travel, not about travel. But this one is both. Oh, and it is Railroad Inc. Oh, uh, I have the red nice. version, blue versions up there. Um, I mean, it's got tons of versions now. It's essentially become the Pokemon franchise. There's a thousand <laughs> colours and a thousand slight variations. Um, but Railroad Inc., for those of you who haven't played it, is a brilliant roll and write game. Everybody gets a small dry erase mat the greatest idea for all them right to dry erase love it and there are four base dice and four expansion dice in each set honestly i primarily play with the base version the expansion versions are fun but i'm never really that bothered and on your turn you roll somebody rolls those four dice and you have they have a mixture of railways and roadways and you have to build the best possible network on your map to score the best points via various conditions while trying to miss any dead connections because you'll lose points for those at the end and you go for seven rounds of the base game doing that every person takes a, a rolling turn and that's it once you've done that you uh, finish the game you add all the points up and away you go it is brilliant it's a great multiplayer solitaire game in that respect i mean most rolling rights are but to go back to that earlier point about at the end of the day you might just be a little bit blitzed with all your with all your traveling and if you've been on a nice adventurous holiday it's quite a therapeutic game it's just as simple as roll the dice fill out your roots maybe use some of your special options which are, are there as well i'll do a rodney and leave those for you to discover on your own and it's lovely to go through that and you can just be quite nice and chill at, you know in a nice pub or a cafe or something even a hotel room you i think the first time we played we played in a bar but you could just take the box out take out the sheets put that in roll the dice in the sheet i'm doing a lot of hand gestures and i realize they're all under the camera <laughs> uh, but roll them in the box and you've got that, that map there that's all you need somewhere to roll dice and somewhere to balance the board on and it is great fun it works outside it works inside it works in loads of places and it plays up to six from the base game again most of my gaming is done in sort of a two-player situation but if you took that someone said what you're playing oh here's a sheet and a pen would you like to take part? And it's a really good way. And if you've got multiple sets, you can play like, well, theoretically infinite people if you all had the uh, the sets that you had. So yeah, excellent game. I'm, have you played Real Ink? Well, not only do I have uh, well, Deep, I'm going to try and get all the names right, Deep Blue okay. and Blazing Red on the shelf behind me. Downstairs, I've just got uh, Shining Yellow yep. and Lush Green. So they're the two uh, the two new uh, Railroad Inc. Challenge games. So I'm excited to see how they change things because there's sort of challenge cards in there that can get you bonus points. So I'm excited by uh, that. Uh, actually, one of the first times I played Railroad Inc. after the convention was in an airport coming back from Essen. So yes, a very good uh, travel game there. And yeah, on theme times two. Right, I felt like I hadn't begun. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, my number three is a game that you don't even need to put necessarily in the bag because it actually is so durable and comes with, uh, you know, one of those like almost climbing uh, hooks. Carabiner, yeah. Uh, I couldn't think of the <laughs> word. Um, it, it comes with one of those, so you can even clip it on the outside of just your, you know, your carry-on bag or rucksack, whatever you're doing. And that is, and it's got two names. Uh, in the UK, it's OK Play, uh, and in the uh, yep. US, I think it's called Clinko Linko. Uh, I'm not sure which ver which name I like best, but they are the same game. It's a single link with like five times links. So yes. yeah, I like the American version better. There, yeah, that makes that does make some sense there. To be fair, why they <laughs> named it like that, um, but yeah, it is effectively Connect Five, which yeah. for a board gamer that sounds like it shouldn't be that much fun, but I really like the aspect of this that once all of the tiles have been used, and you can definitely win before all the tiles have been used. 
you start to remove them and then replace them. So once all the tiles are down and you have to build adjacent uh, up until that point, then you start on your turn, you remove a t one of your tiles and then again, place it down adjacent somewhere else, which then means two things. A, you are opening up the opportunity of going there for your opponent, which, you know, so you have to be wareful of that. It also means that if you've started going in one direction and then it's been blocked off quite quickly, but you've got a you know a potential route somewhere else, you can just move that one from over there and put it down here. And all of a sudden you've got four in a row and you're a lot closer to the victory. Um, and it's got the fun of just like the connect four of uh, fun of right I've if I can get it so I've got four here and I could put one on either end I know I've won so that core logic of super simple to play is there and they're plastic tiles so you could literally drop these in a puddle just go and wash them off and you can carry on uh, so yeah clinko linko or okay play love that game that was that was almost on my list. Um, it's, I can see it where I am now. Yeah, uh, you're right. It's so easy to teach. It's so easy to play it. So, I, I've talked to a few people and I've explained to them, and they've looked at me and they've, they've physically seen their eyes straining to stop from rolling at me. Like, are you for real, Mister Big Board Game? Are you trying to teach me <laughs> Connect Five? How way? And then they start playing. And they go, Oh no, that's really good. That's really good. And I got it on a whim because it was seven pounds somewhere. It was on sale. I was like, Yeah, why not? Let's give that a go. And I remember playing, and what I love is playing it with people who aren't as big gamers. Like just, just thrash it. I played it with a friend of mine, and she destroyed us every single time. Although my most embarrassing one is I bought it for my uh, nephews for Christmas, and we sat we stood and played it in the kitchen bench to show them how it worked because I know they were, were travelling a lot. And um, our youngest nephew, I think, our middle nephew came in, just, just destroyed us. Every one of us, three adults, <laughs> no chance. He's just like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. How are you? Are you, you going to give us a challenge or what? But it, you're right, it's so good, it's so hard wearing. Also, removing the tiles from that peg, what a satisfying sound. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, and putting them back on, and then it just clips on the side, and then you're off, you're done. It, yep. Yeah. Really good at different player counts as well, that one, which I think yes. that's quite helpful. You can get a two-player only version, I've seen. Or yes. I, I, I would recommend just getting the four-player one, though, because you can still play just two players, or as soon as someone else turns up, not deal them in, off. but let them in and they sit down and play and pretty much instantly they can compete. So, yeah, really the good thing is, if I remember rightly, the two-player one is two separate colours as well, so you can potentially have up to six. I might be wrong. Yes, I think it is. I think I think you can combine them, yeah. Yeah, That'd be, that would be chaos. I mean, <laughs> good, good chaos, though. <laughs> Yes, oh yeah, definitely. There'd be shouts in, in whatever bar you're playing that in. <laughs> no, excellent choice. That was that was on my on my show list. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. So what's your number two? So my number two is one of my favourite games of all time and is just excellent. It is Star Realms. Okay. Yeah, here in this box. Uh, Star Realms is, for everybody who hasn't played, the perfect distillation of the deck building concept. You and your opponent have health total each and a starting deck of 10 cards there is a trade row in the center of five cards on your turn you play cards and they will either give you currency give you damage of output or give you health regeneration and you're either buying cards from the center to put in your discard pile to then shuffle up when you run out of cards to draw to start a new deck and to buy cards to improve your ability to deal damage buy more cards build a little engine there and it's just brilliant it's got two really cool concepts as well which make the deck building thing sing which is there are four suits for factions in the game and you have a ally ability so if you have one of the blue faction and it has a little symbol that says right well you do one damage as standard or if there is another blue card you will do an additional two damage you do three damage total so you play that card mm -hmm. another blue card comes out so now that's got bigger the other card has an ally ability and then that gets bigger there as well and then in some of the myriad expansions that it has it had um combined ally abilities so then you had two mixtures of colors which got a bit crazy got bases which are permanent things because once you played a card at the end of your turn you discard it and it's just brilliant it was made by two former magic pro players now my hobby gaming journey started in a missed place early 20s playing magic for a couple of years 
it's one of the reasons it took me so long to move out my parents' house. Um, <laughs> any Magic players here will be like, yeah, we know. Um, and it gives me all of the vibes you get from that game. It gives that that quick card play. It gives you the great combat mechanics. It gives you those wonderful combos. And in terms of travel, we it comes in normally in about ten pounds in England, and it's a small box. And the day we got it, my partner and I actually went out. We went out to go for a, an afternoon in the town. We went to a new game shop that we really liked. We're like, all right, we'll go in, see what games are there. We brought one or two. We're like, we'll find one. Hopefully, we can buy and play it a day in the pub. We bought that. Went in the pub, sat down, played a couple of games. Like. Well, that was so good, we're going to go back to the shop and we're going to buy the other base game that it had. We went oh. and bought the Nat one and went back to the pub and played that as well. And then we went away on holiday that week, took that with us, played it every time we went down for a drink somewhere. We sat and played that game. And in between games, I was on my phone like, oh, so there's an expansion. Yeah, I'll order that. Yeah, I'll order that. I'll order that. And I've got like just a wall of purple deck case <laughs> now in the shop behind me, uh, just, just full of Star Realms, including some new packs that literally arrived yesterday I haven't even opened. I mean, Brilliant. yeah, I mean, it, it's it's perhaps maybe, for me, for a travel game, I think it's maybe thinky, too thinky, because it, it's not, like you said on yep. a couple of your other ones, normally by the end of the day, you kind of want to switch off your brain a little bit, so you just want something small, uh, or yep. something like that, you know, hence Connect 5, or something like that. Um, but, you know, <laughs> once once you've played it enough, so, like a game like that really does just almost not become second nature but you know it's you start you know all the combos and it's just choosing your combos uh then yeah. so it you know it get it doesn't grow with you you almost it's a it gets easier the more you play and then it can become your travel game yeah definitely and that's what we do there we, we, we know a lot of the combos or at least know the, the concept of some of the combos even though yeah. you might have forgotten a card you get that there and it, it's you can't be a bit heavy at the end of the day. Sometimes it's good sort of during a day because you can finish a game in like tw- in 10 seconds. You can finish a game in 20 minutes. It's it's really variable, but it's because of that standard deck and that array in the middle, you've got so much variability as well. When we talked earlier about games, you can play it again and again and again while you're away. No two games of that should be the same if you're better at chuffing than I am. Which I <laughs> terrible at chuffing. Yeah, that's always the problem. You need to shuffle well, otherwise you end up replaying the same game, right? <laughs> I am the worst at shuffling. I, uh, there was a special dispensation when I played Magic where somebody else was allowed to shuffle my deck, which was a no-no, because the, the TM was like, yeah, mate, you're so bad. This, this, I don't mind. It's like, one of these two guys can shuffle for you. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so, yes, what's your number two? Well, my number two has actually already been said. Uh-huh. I tried not to give too much away, although I maybe hinted quite a bit by saying I played it at an airport, and that is Railroad Inc. Uh-huh. My favourite one, I haven't played the two new ones that are downstairs yet, is out of a red and blue, like you say, very much like a Pokemon with Pokemon with all the names and everything and all the colours. Right. Uh, probably blue because I feel the expansions in in deep blue are more about adding whereas yeah. in the blazing red uh, railroad ink blazing red it's got like the volcano and the meteors and they destroy yeah. some of your stuff and especially with the meteors I found that it was almost even more randomness and it hurt you Whereas yeah. with the with the blue dice, both of the, those expansions, it was a okay. I can add that lake over here or that river curving over there, and it, they felt much more like additions that will give you points rather than something that's going to detract from an absolutely phenomenal base game. Um, yeah. Like you said, I, I think maybe eight out of ten times I play, maybe because I do play it with a lot of new people uh, if I can. Yeah. I think I play just the base game more often because yeah. it's just so simple. It's just roads and rails and you slowly build something out. And, you know, at the end of a, a big day or something, you know, just slowly building out that road or slowly curving that rail, you can feel, even if you don't win, you feel like you've built something, you know, a small network over the course of the game. You can do very badly by not connecting things or and chancing it and being like, okay, I really need this straight road to come up because it will link so much together. And then it doesn't come up. 
Um, yeah. But you know, you've taken that risk. Um, where you know, so I like that aspect of. Uh, I don't normally like push your luck too much, but in that aspect of, you know, that's completely on you. You could have just used what you had on the dice for a different use, but you've decided to push your luck. So yeah, yeah. it's on both of our lists. So it must be phenomenal railroading. No. Fully agree, and I agree with you on the the expansions as well. We only got Deep Blue like like last year, mm -hmm. um, second hand, and it was, and yes, that they're adding the rail, the the rivers and the lakes. I, I did try to get the lake entirely in the nine square uh, squares in the centre, which are worth more points just for aesthetic purposes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't think I did, but I tried. But you're right about also you can just enjoy building something and if you're not too competitive about who's winning which often when I'm playing real world it's, it's just my partner we, we aren't that bothered I will just be like I'm just going to try and make a nice connection I'm going to try and get from here to here and see, set my own mini goals because I'm not bothered about the points because yeah. I never get very good points to begin with <laughs> um, but it is, it's just nice and then you can just if you're not very artistically talented like me you can just, just draw it's nice drawing simple drawing it's like sketching no I fully agree it is a phenomenal uh, travel game but it's not as good as our number ones because neither of us have put it there so here we go what is the best travel game it's my best travel game is a cop out if it's probably the most obvious answer but it just shows i'll give you a hint it is hive pocket okay, okay. Possibly the best travel game of all time uh, for those of you who don't know, it is a chess-like game in which you all have, you and your opponent control different insect-shaped pieces, and those insect pieces are insect-shaped, insect-themed pieces. They're all hexagonal, and your aim is to try and surround your opponent's queen bug. And by doing so, you place each one. You have to place it or move a piece, and they all move in different ways. And it it captures that kind of chess-like vibe, which I played a. a Decent bit of chess, chess, chess when I was a teenager. <laughs> I enjoyed it, and I like the idea of chess. But this is so different; it doesn't have a board. The pieces themselves connect the board, and there's a rule about making sure you never split it, so it's always one connected set of tiles, and it's just fantastic. I am, um, and it's beautiful. It's hard wearing. Those tiles are really solid. They, I don't think, take any damage. The bag's really good. It'll fit in pockets. It'll fit in backpacks. It'll fit in coats. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, the picture of me on my Instagram page is me playing it on top of Place Fell in the Lake District, just Very to nice. prove that we could. <laughs> and I think I bought it. I, I bought it because I remember reading a thread somewhere. So I was like, what what kind of games do you see from today's modern era that'd be around in a thousand years? And someone said Hive, and I looked at it and I was like, yeah, you're right. That could be a thousand years from now. People are still playing it. And it attracts uh, attention. We are, my partner I was talking about today, my partner reminded me, we took it the first time I bought it, we went away to Fort Aventura, and we were playing it in like a little hotel, in the hotel bar one night, and just sort of going through and getting animated at each other because we're pulling <laughs> great moves, no, no two games are the same, and there was just this, this old lady sat in the corner, like, and she said, what are you playing? And we had to sit and explain, <laughs> we almost got playing to be honest, but it looks so different and so unique to everything and else you might be playing. Everyone's used to seeing things like dominoes or cards and yeah, it's just great. I know I know you've played it. I think I remember you, you've seen it on some of your lists. Like, it's a great game, right? It is a great game. It is just missing this list. I mean, it's phenomenal for the travel purposes. The chunky tiles, the fact... I literally have dropped one of these pieces into a puddle. Um, I, said, I said that about uh, OK Play as an example, but I actually have done that for this because um, I was trying to get an artsy photo uh, and uh, it slipped into the puddle. Um, so, yes, you can easily clean these. I think part of me, I, I, it was literally just on the top five list I did with Jordan. I think that was in the back of my mind and I knew I would at least give it an honourable mention. It is a yeah. great game. My probably biggest problem with it is while it looks different, I think a lot of people struggle in that first couple of plays, uh, which yeah. is fine if you're you know if you're going on holiday with a, a load of people you know, you can easily teach them and like over the course of the holiday, they will definitely be able to compete with you by the end. But those yeah. first couple of plays of okay, 
that one like that can do this movement and that one does this movement is just that that slight step but i i do really love it i just wish i could play it more to be honest not um, fair but uh yeah, yeah it is a great it is a great game it might be easier to teach people going forward i know there was a big sur surge in chess players thanks to the queen's gambit last year and i did want to take it on a business trip and taught one of my colleagues who i knew had played chess and other games in the past i taught him on like, a table of the train on the way down to a conference and he got it quite quick because he had that background so who yeah. knows maybe next year you'll get a lot more players in yeah it's uh, yeah it's certainly got those um those vibes of chess it captures those really nicely without having a board uh, which is a cool yes. thing yeah. so i mean it's a good game but it, it's it's not a patch on my number one okay. uh, <laughs> so <laughs> my number one is the only game i have ever managed to play in the back of a minibus it's a card only game it's a very small not even box it says like it's a small like drawstring bag that's got it it's all about a princess ah it's got to be love letter now i'm probably a little bit late to the love letter party i'd played it a couple of times including like the batman version but i got the the 2019 new version uh, in 2019 yep. uh, and absolutely fell in love with the game it, it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely one of my my top games and it's just so small so for those that haven't played it there are about 21 cards I'm not 100% sure on that number, but basically they are numbered between 1 and 10, or 0 and 10 in the uh, 0 and 7, 8, not sure now. If I, uh, I know why. If I, yeah, because of the different versions, they have different numbers of cards and they go up to a different yeah. version. The princess in the latest one is 9 and 0 is a spy. Now, in the older versions, there was two fewer types of cards. So that's why I'm getting confused, because it's phenomenal, and I will always try and play it. Yep. You deal the cards out, you have one card. So you know that little bit of information. Everyone else has got their one card, and on your, on your turn, you draw another card from the middle, and you play one of those two. Which means, even in the first game, when they don't really know what's going on, they don't have a huge choice. They sometimes will have two identical cards and they really don't have a choice, but otherwise there's two cards for them to choose from. And one is you guess and uh, the, you play the guard, for instance, and you guess what card someone else has. If you get it right, they're out. The idea is to stay in or at the very end have the highest numbered card. The highest number is the princess, but the princess is a double-edged sword. You've got the highest card, but you can never play it. And if anyone ever forces you to discard it, you're out. And it's just an absolutely brilliant game from that. I played it so, so much. Uh, not so much in the last year, because it's been hard to get things to the table. But for instance, I went to Nepal, and we played it with brand new people, and they i mean the amount of people that were like what oh what's that what's that game that's being played oh, join in sort of thing we got yeah. them and the amount of people that were then like okay i'll just uh, go on amazon buy all right when i get home that will be uh, waiting for me and stuff like that it's it's cheap it's portable i probably should have sleeved my cards because they are very worn now but you know it's it's like 10 quid so i can buy another copy but the version i've got is it's 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 that special thing of it's been on holidays with me i've had such great times with it i think it works really well at two because some of the extra some of the cards are revealed at the start which means it just quickens the roundup slightly and you still get the bluffing um of what do i think they've got and they, you know, there's cards that allow you to see what the other one other person's got to compare cards, and whoever's got the highest stays in, the other person's knocked out, and things like that. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you said love. I'm assuming you've played it at least. Yeah. Yes, I have a Batman behind me somewhere. 
um, because I'm a massive Batman fan, and it is a great game. I remember buying it and playing it with friends who were like mixed ability and getting uh, big game playing, and they all loved it. We had a great time. I actually remember taking it uh, to my uh, my partner's sister's wedding, and we went and I went the night before, and she was a bridesmaid, so she had to do all the all that sort of stuff. And I remember playing games with a couple of her friends, and there we had that. And then like on the actual wedding day, I think I had it in my jacket pocket, and then <laughs> you know that that lull in a wedding between sort of the ceremony and the dinner, and there's like an hour and a half where the photos are being taken, everyone's just kind of waiting. Yes. Like, I pulled it back out, and sort of grabbed one of our friends, like, "Do you have no game yet?" And then a few people like. Yeah, what's going on here? Oh, we're playing a game, guys. We're getting involved. Yeah, we do. And then everyone's like, well, what's going on here? And they're like, we're playing Love Letter. Get out of the way. Come on. <laughs> it was getting really intense. It was really good. It is excellent. I haven't played it in a while, I think, because it does work at two, but I think we've got, my partner, have so many of our two player games we normally go to. But I perhaps might have to take it back out when we go on holiday again later on this year, not on wood, because it is, yeah, it's great. And so many versions, I have to resist the edge of buying other versions, even though it's like <laughs> almost the same game. Like, I always want the Archer, I love that there, because it just, look, just looks fun. But yeah, oh, great shout. Yeah, you're right, I, I almost hadn't, hadn't considered it. Yeah, there, there is one that I've got two versions of it. I've also got the Infinity Gauntlet version, and that does actually, that is quite different. Uh, it's got the same logics, but it's on all against one, with one person being mm-hmm. Thanos. And... I don't know, it's good because it is a nice Marvel theme, but it kind of loses the the perfect balance and the, the bluffing and the fun, I think, of Love Letter. But it, it, it's a nice twist. At least it wasn't just a reskin. Um, yeah. But yeah, all the different versions. I've played the Batman one. I've played the original. I've played the new one. Uh, the new one is, I'd say, the one to go for. Um, but I would, yeah, I'd love to play all of them. <laughs> I definitely try no, especially the ones that are different. Although it's ironic that like your uh, Thanos one loses the perfect balance. That's it's a touch ironic. That's the whole deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, terrible joke. Here all week, folks. Don't be aware of this. Um, but no, excellent show. So yeah, that's a good five. Yeah, so a a great list. So I'm just having a quick look. Uh, you've mentioned my number six hive pocket. Um, yep. Another one that. Uh, I thought just because sometimes um, you know you travel and maybe other people aren't up for a game or um, you know you want something cooperative something a little bit different Bandido Uh, Mm. it's uh, a really fun game where you're trying to capture Bandido as he escapes down these tunnel routes and you're playing the cards from your hand to do these sort of wiggling routes trying to close them in with these torch lights it's a fun one you can play it solo it's one of the games that I would actually play solo um, every now and again. And it's an absolutely tiny box. Uh, so I just thought maybe, you know, as a honourable mention, a cooperative uh, game to take away. A little bit different, Bandido. Do you have any honourable mentions that haven't been mentioned? <laughs> a few. Um, band- Funny enough, when you mentioned Bandido, we almost bought that once on holiday because it looked like it was something we could play in the bar at the hotel. Um, and we didn't. We bought uh, Karimba from the same publisher instead, which oh, is yeah. the Rena one, which was which was also fun. Um, oh, I think I had about fourteen honorable mentions by the time I finished. Um, <laughs> a few of them I discounted because they were similar to the games I picked. Um, although when you mentioned your airport store, I mean one of the games I discounted, but I love is Camisado Pocket, which comes in like a clown shell container, which is an excellent chess like. And we played that at UK Games Expo in a queue for a uh, for one of the panels. We sat yep. and picked it up and stepped down, sat back down <laughs> yeah. and then played the next hand. Um, but when I'm looking at things, okay, play was on my short list. And there's one or two bigger ones that I actually, I almost mentioned just to be just to be fun about it. Um, there are two biggish box games we've taken away. So when we, we go away on holiday regularly to a, a hotel in the Lake District, and it's got we know it's got decent sized bar tables, so we'll often go there and play a game, one afternoon we'll sort of sit in the bar, bar and play games. And two we've played quite a bit there, which might surprise us, Skull Hollow and Starship Samurai, which is a game almost nobody talks about, because they are bigger box games, but they aren't massive table spaces, and more importantly, they have not a huge amount of pieces in play at any one time. They have lots of pieces, but you only have maybe... 10 items out on the table at any one time. Admittedly, in more than two players for Starship Samurai, it gets a bit big and gets a bit worrying, but 
you can get like a small sort of two foot, uh, three foot by three foot t- bar table, sit down and play those games. If you know you want having to carry the box around all day, <laughs> yeah. you just go them down. that is the reason it wouldn't travel there. But we have taken it away with us for that purpose. And I wanted to give it an honorable mention because it is a surprisingly good game to take away because you can fit it in a relatively small space. Like my golden measurement is we have the, you know, the classic Magic the Gathering play mats. Oh, sized yeah. sort of play mats. Two of those side by side covers your average UK bar table. And if a game fits on that, in my head, it's a it's a game you can play in a bar. So what it will fit on that. But those are two on really offbeat honourable mentions I will throw out there. Yeah, I mean, I certainly uh, I with uh, Skulk Hollow that well, that one really does intrigue me as a two-player game. I think it, it'll be more when I can. Well, hopefully next week, right? We will be able to actually meet up with yep. more people, and that's the sort of game where it is very much one player against the other player. There's no like, right? It's two player, and we're kind of doing our own thing. So I can't. Yep. I don't. I often shy away from playing those too much with my wife. So when when there's opportunities to uh, play it and uh, you know screw other people over, uh, <laughs> that will be uh, maybe uh, rising up my shortlist. I will. I say it is surprisingly balanced. Um, we're not too much for direct conflict, but if it is the purpose of the game, it doesn't feel so bad. You know, I feel like you're really sort of screwing anybody over. Um, but it does feel like you're only one or two steps away from winning on either side and so it's all it's a good one for going okay again or all right we'll just turn the board around let's try this again oh, uh, but yeah it's a really great game hmm. um i think there's one more thing i spotted that i w- mentioned sunna's isle great sort of little small box area control game we are going to take it away when we go away next when we can um i love an area control due to the map thing and it's nice to have that in a small situation because they normally are like massive mini fields Monsters, monstrosities, and yeah, it's like yeah, big. It's really cool. Oh, perfect. Well, there you go, everyone. A range, a huge range of games, but we also had you know some crossovers, especially if you include honourable mentions. Now, right. Andy, where can people find more of your content online? Uh, so you can find me on Instagram at Portable Gaming. That's P O T A B L E Gaming. It means safe to drink. Uh, it was a clever joke at the time, and it's backfired on me massively. Um, <laughs> I have been known to appear on Board Game Breakfast. I may be back there eventually in the future. Uh, I'm also on some other interesting projects that are starting, and I'm not advertised those yet. Um, but you can find me there and wherever else anybody will have me, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> this has been great. Oh, well, thank you very much for joining, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a great day, and goodbye. Take care, everybody. Bye.